Moving on to another rate of change example, so we have a circle and it's expanding. At what rate is its area changing with respect to its radius when its radius is 100 centimeters? Now, you'll run into these types of questions a lot, whether on a test or in your textbook, where they're asking for the rate of change in terms of a volume or a surface area, or in this case, an area. Sometimes the questions will be worded differently. So for example, this question, a common way that it's worded is that a stone is dropped in the water and then circular waves are created and they're expanding. So that would be a circle expanding like in this question. But in this case, I kept the wording of the question pretty simple. Now, the first thing you wanna figure out in these types of questions is what's the dependent variable and what's the independent variable. So the dependent variable, if you notice, the area is changing with respect to its radius, to the circle's radius. So the dependent uh, variable is the area, and that's measured in centimeters squared, because we're dealing with centimeters in this question. And then the independent variable, the area depends on the radius and the radius is measured in centimeters. So making an equation to relate these two, we know that the area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. So this is, uh, this is the equation that we'll be dealing with. You could have also wrote a as a function of r is equal to pi r squared. Either or works. So now let's read the question. At what rate is its area changing with respect to its radius when its radius is 100 centimeters? So the circle is expanding. So it starts here, then it goes here, and then it goes here. And they wanna know how fast is the area expanding when the radius of the circle is 100 centimeters. So because they're looking for a rate of change at a specific point in time, they're looking for the instantaneous rate of change. So ultimately what we want is the instantaneous rate of change of the area when r is equal to 100. But before we get there, I say we figure out what's the instantaneous rate of change of the area when r is equal to a general value of a. So then we'll get an expression for the instantaneous rate of change in terms of a, and then we can plug in 100 for a, or any value that we would want. So to find out the instantaneous rate of change of the area when r is equal to a, we use the difference quotient. So a, this, large, this capital A represents the area, this uh, equation right here, pi r squared of a plus h minus a of small a all over h. So this capital A represents the area, and then this small a represents the general value of the radius. So plugging this now into our formula for area, we would have pi, and then we would plug in a plus h for the r. So we'd have a plus h squared minus a of a, we would plug in just the small a for the r. So we'd have pi a squared all over h. So simplifying this further, we would take this a plus h squared and then foil it, and we'd end up having a squared plus 2ah plus h squared with the pi still in front. This uh, pi a squared stays, and then we would distribute that pi inside the bracket here. So we would end up with this. Now notice in the numerator how these pi a squareds cancel out. So let's rewrite what we got up here. So we're left with <coughs> 2a pi h plus pi h squared all over h. And now remember our goal is to cancel out this h in the denominator. So what we would do is we would factor out an h in the numerator. So we'd have 2a pi plus uh, pi h all over h. The h's cancel out and we're left with 2a pi plus pi h. And now remember the instantaneous rate of change, we get the exact value of it when h is approaching zero or when it's equal to zero. So when h is equal to zero, this goes to zero. So this here is our general 
expression 2a pi for the instantaneous rate of change of the area of a circle when r is equal to a. So we could plug in any radius for a and that would give us the instantaneous rate of change of the circle expanding at that point in time where the radius has that a value. Now again, one more time, don't get confused with the capital A and the small a. The capital A represents the dependent variable which is the area and the small a in this case represents a general value for the radius, so they're different. Anyway, so now that we have this general instantaneous rate of change expression, we can figure out what's the instantaneous rate of change when r is equal to 100. So all we do is we plug in 100 for the a value. So we would end up getting 200 pi. And now in terms of the variable, remember that the rate of change is expressed as the change in the dependent variable per one unit of the independent variable. So the rate of change of the area with respect to radius would be 200 pi centimeters squared, which is the units for the area, per change in one centimeter of the radius. So that there is your final answer. So just as a recap of what we did, first we figured out what the dependent and independent variable was in the question. Then we related the dependent and independent variable with a um, area equation of a circle, so a equals pi r squared. Then we figured out what's the instantaneous rate of change when r takes a general value of a, when the radius has a general value of a, so we use the difference quotient got a general expression for the instantaneous rate of change when the radius is equal to a. And then since we wanted the instantaneous rate of change when the radius is 100, we just plugged in 100 for the a value. Now, just a quick note before finishing this video, you could have also just went straight into finding out when r is equal to 100 at this point. So instead of putting these a values, these small a values, you would put 100. So the difference quotient would then look like this, 100 plus h minus a of 100 all over h. And then you would just plug in 100 plus h for the r value here, so this would be 100, and then you would plug in 100 for the radius in the uh, area equation and you'd get a certain value here. And then you could do all the algebra, and instead of getting a general expression, you would end up getting 200 pi right away. So you can try that on your own. Uh, but a lot of times the teacher first wants to have a general expression for the radius. So when the radius is equal to some general value, whether it's a, x, whatever you label that as, find the general expression and then plug in the radius. And it also gives you a lot more flexibility because if they ask you for the instantaneous rate of change at multiple points, so let's say this was like a three part question, and they ask you for the instantaneous rate of change when r is equal to 100 and when it's equal to 150 and 200, you don't have to do this three times. You could just find a general expression and then for every value, 100, 150, 200, you could just plug it in here and get the answer right away.